So what are you guys doing tonight? Tonight is Tuesday, the 9th of September, and there's something going on tonight around 9.30 Eastern Time. Hmm. You guys like bar stools? I think they turned out pretty cool. I was, I was on the phone with my wife when I was staining these things, and I was so pissed off at the color that I chose, because these are way too dark for what I had in mind. But in the end, they turned out pretty good. I'm uh, actually quite pleased with them and they look great where they were going to be where they were intended to be used so that's really all that matters they may not look so well out here in the shop but where they sit and where the rest of their life will be it looks very well so I'm happy with that and um, I'm happy with the way that they turned out you know I made two and anytime you make two of one project in my case anytime I make two of one project the first one is the one that always turns out like crap because you learn from the first one and say, oh, I'm not going to do that on the second one. The first one I've got, well, first off, my planer left a little snipe line right there. And I thought I sanded it off and couldn't even tell it until I put stain on it. Oh, so aggravating. I don't know if you can see these showing up. Let me see. Any way the light will show it? Maybe right there is a big nasty chip out from the router. And I've also got it right here on one of the legs. So... I was routing the wrong direction, screwed up, and I learned from it, and um, didn't do that on the second one. The second one turned out great. Absolutely no problems with it, which I knew I was going to have one good, and one, one good one and one bad one when I was making them because I didn't have enough awesome lumber to make two of them with, you know, perfect grain and whatnot. So I'm, I put all the good one, good pieces on one uh, bar stool, and then I knew the second one was going to kind of be... As far as grain selection, it wouldn't be that great. So the second one is the one I actually started on with, as far as sanding and routing and all that stuff. And I did the finish on it first. And it looks like crap compared to the other one. Well, my shop is a disaster right now. I've got so much crap that I need to pick up. Tonight at 9.30 p.m. is the live Q&A with myself and Bob Claggett from I Like to Make Stuff. And it's just any questions that you may have for myself or Bob and we'll be happy to answer them. It's going to be fun, it's going to be live, and it's going to be on Google+. Plus. So see you there. You guys see the new sander I got? I got a new um, DeWalt Variable Speed Random Orbital Sander, and I, I'm to the point where I don't like buying tools because I'm so much of a damn cheapskate. But I ended up buying it because my Hitachi that I've been using for years and years and years, it still works, it still works great, but the the Velcro pad that's on it, the hook and loop pad that was on it, was wore out, so I had to buy a new one. Bought a new one off eBay or Amazon, and it got it came in, I installed it, and I used it for two projects. I don't know if it's just not balanced properly or if it's just too heavy or what. It wasn't an OEM replacement part. It was a, you know, just some generic replacement part that will work with that sander, and it was like 10 bucks. But I put it on there, and the thing vibrates worse than like a weed eater when you're out in the yard or something. Uh, in order to use it, I got to use like a real thick glove or else my hand hurts so bad. So it still works just fine, but it's, it, it's painful to use. And I think I'm just going to end up, I don't know if I'll sell it or just, I'll probably just give it away. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give away a bunch of my tools that I have a, multiples of. I've got uh, multiple uh, jigsaws, multiple uh, sanders that I'm never going to use, multiple, what are those things that they... They just vibrate back and forth. An oscillating tool or one of them little vibrating tools has got a bunch of different um, attachments for it. Um, I got a couple of those, and it's just like uh, you get a better one, so you don't use the other one. Nothing's wrong with it, but you just prefer another one. So why keep them? I think I'm just going to give them. I think that's what I'll give them away to somebody. This was the first project that I also uh, had to use my air compressor here in the new shop, and. I was so lucky with that last shop. The apartment shop, I had the air compressor, which is it's an oilless, oilless air compressor. So, you know, they're, they're noisy as crap. And I had it down the hallway, in the bedroom, and in the closet, and then barricaded. So I could barely hear it when I was in the main work area of that apartment workshop. Now I've just got it sitting next to my wall over here under my lumber rack. And wow, was that loud when it was running in here. So I don't know if I use it enough to justify making some type of sound baffling unit for it. I don't want to make the outside of my home look kind of, I'm going to say trashy, but I don't want to build some like small little doghouse kind of thing for this. 
to keep it outside. You know, I just, it's just so much easier to just leave it in here. And I, I don't really use it that much. So I probably just going to deal with the noise. Hey, do you guys remember my little, um, I posted this on Facebook, uh, my remote start little plug-in thingy that I bought for my dust collector. This is actually like a rated at 15 amps. And a lot of people on Lumberjack said that, oh, hey, it works. It's worked for a long time. And it'll work with my dust collector. And my dust collector is rated at 20 amps. And some people, you know, oh, had no problems with it. Well, mine finally died after like four months. I thought it'd last a little bit longer than that. I didn't think it'd last forever, but I did think it would last a little longer than four months. But anyway, it is dead. If you are interested in getting one of these for like a dust collector, whatever, just buy the right amperage unit. Um, I didn't think there would be any safety hazard with this thing. I just thought it would just break either on or off, which it did. It broke in the on position. So this is no longer, this is like a, it's like a six inch extension cord. If you ever just need six inches more for your extension cord, just get one of these. See, so yeah, I'm a little bummed about that. That's very handy to have a little, one of these little, um, one of these little push button starters. I just, you know, every time I wanted to start it. Starting it and stopping it at the table saw was very handy. I think I'll just, buy a heavier duty one. So on my first shop tour video on this, kind of shop tour video on this vlog channel, I was undecided on what to do with my clamps. And did you guys see actually what I did with them? All of my longer clamps I put up on the wall uh, behind the planer area. And all of my shorter clamps, I just screwed some two by fours to my uh, outfeed table and put them around that. And they're all scattered throughout the shop this way. And you know what? I just really don't care anymore. I don't think I will make a clamp rack anytime soon. Uh, what I have now is just working fine. If you're looking out at my garage, the property to the left of me, the road goes forward to that property and then turns right. And some people kind of turned the corner and were looking at me and then they just turned around and walked off. I haven't met all my neighbors yet, but apparently most of them have seen me talking into a camera, which for some people that might be a little weird, but I'm used to it, so whatever. This week, I don't know if I'll have time to get the project video out yet. I've got uh, two bathroom vanities I'm making for a relative, and they're rather large projects, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to have it done by Saturday, Sunday. So what I'm probably going to end up doing is instead of rushing the project, I'll probably just work on it as I can get it completed and probably finish Monday or Tuesday-ish and then have the video for the following weekend. But instead of having nothing this weekend, I think I'm going to uh, talk about my planer setup. A lot of people, and by a lot of people, I actually meet a lot this time, um, have asked questions about my planer setup and the planer itself. And I'll probably just go through that. I don't know what it was. This, this um, barstool project seemed to be tool question project. Uh, I had a couple of people ask questions about the HVLP setup that I have too. So, and that's just nothing more than a Harbor Freight purple gun. I think they're like 10 to $15 HVLP guns and it's broke. I got to get a new one, but uh, during the move, I piled it in the bottom of a box and I think I threw something heavy on top of it. So the, the fan adjustment knob completely broke off and then I had to kind of crimped something down on top of it and bend it a little bit because air was coming out and I couldn't get control. It's crap, but I got to get a new one. It's not crap. It's crap now, but the, the gun itself is a great value at Harbor Freight. Um, I just broke it. Another hot tool topic it seemed like on that project was my miter saw. I've got a cobalt 10 inch sliding compound fancy fancy miter saw that's pretty much junk. Um, First off, why did I cut the pieces at the miter saw first and then final trim them up at the table saw? Well, that's because my miter saw has got a lot of um, flex in the arm. And it's a lot of flex in the arm left and right when you're making a cut. It doesn't really hold an angle too well. And of course, the left and right flex doesn't really, uh, I can't trust it to be accurate for final cuts. So I just rough cut with it and then um, cut everything on the, the table saw sled to final length when I can. Of course, longer stuff you can't. But that's actually the one of the only places that I want to get a new tool here in the shop is the miter saw. The old shop, I had a dedicated miter saw set up, um, various different dedicated miter saw setups, and they all worked out really well. And now that I don't have one here, I've really uh, forgotten how, or I've really been reminded about how uh, convenient a dedicated miter saw setup is, if not dedicated, just some place where you don't have to just store the miter saw and bring it out and store it and bring it out. 
and having some type of larger work area it really is nice for a miter saw. So I think that might be one of the places that I uh, actually uh, upgraded the tool here in the shop. And I think, I think that's it. I don't really have any needs for any more tools, really. Kind of sounds weird to say, but I guess it's true. Well, I think I'm done rambling about stuff. I don't really have much else to say other than tonight, 9.30 p.m. I know this video is coming out a little bit late, but 9.30 p.m. Eastern time is the live Google Plus Hangout uh, Q&A session called Brain Pick with me and Bob Claggett. Just ask us a bunch of questions. If you don't have any questions, come on and stop by. Anyway, I'd love to see everybody there. Um, thanks for watching, folks, and have a great day.